Today we are going to continue to talk about linear regression and we'll kind of review a little bit of what we did yesterday when we learned to um, draw our line of best fit by hand and calculate its equation. And then we are also going to learn how to perform linear regression with your graphing calculator. So we've got a problem here where this table is showing data that relates the number of oil changes that somebody gets for their car per year to the total cost of car repairs for that year. So first thing it wants us to do is plot the data on the grid. X-axis is the number of oil changes. So just like yesterday, um, I've already got the axes labeled for you, but we need to pick a scale. So you'll notice that the data is not in order, it's just pretty random, but the lowest number I see on oil changes is 0 and the highest number I see is 10. So that means it should be okay to go ahead and count by 1's on my x-axis. And on my y-axis, which is the cost of repairs, I need to look and see what my highest value is. So it looks like 800 is the highest value. So um, if I count by 50s, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, it's not going to be quite big enough. So um, I'm going to go ahead and count by 100s. 3, 4, 5, so 500 would be right here, and 1,000 would be up here, so we're counting by 100s there. So plotting the points, 3 oil changes and the cost of repair was $300, so that's this point right here. Then 5 oil changes also had a cost of 300 two oil changes and the repairs cost five hundred dollars that year three oil changes for somebody else and four hundred dollars one oil change and seven hundred dollars in repairs four and four hundred right here six and one hundred and four two hundred and fifty so right halfway between the two hundred and the three hundred three four hundred and fifty so just above this other one two six fifty zero eight hundred ten oil changes and no money spent on the repairs and then seven oil changes and a hundred and fifty alright so we've got all of our data there so now we need to draw the line of best fit remember again we're trying to get um, along with it going through the middle of the trend, we also want to try to make the same number of points below the line as there are above the line. So this point is kind of a little bit of an outlier. It's kind of off of the trend, so we'll kind of disregard it as we're connecting here. But it looks like um, that I could draw a line in here that would really go through about four of the points. And again, you should use a straight edge um, or a ruler when you do your line of best fit. I just can't because I can't use that on a screencast. So I'm going to connect those four because that looks like it's going through my trend. And it goes through about four of the points. And um, then I've got, it looks like, I think this is just one point here, um, one, two, three, four um, below it, and one, two, three, four, five um, above it. So again, we've met the qualifications, we've got our line of best fit. So 
Um, now we need to select two points on the line and calculate the slope. So I'm going to use um, this point right here. So that's 1, 700. And then I'm going to use this one on the bottom because you kind of want them to be further away if you can help it. So that's 6, 100. So finding the slope y2 minus y1, so x1, y1, x2, y2. So 100 minus 700, 6 minus 1. So that gives me negative 600. over 5, which is negative 120. Okay, so um, as we are looking, we want to know what this means. What does the slope represent? So you can see that it's got a negative correlation there. The trend is going down which means that the slope, because it's negative, is representing a decrease. So what's decreasing? The y is decreasing. So a decrease in repair cost. And that's per whatever my x-axis is, which is oil changes. So that means that you approximately every time you get your oil changed you're saving yourself hundred and twenty dollars in car repairs for that year is what that slope would be telling us so now we need to write the equation of the line just like we did yesterday again as I discussed yesterday I always use point slope if you want to pick an X Y and plug it in to find B you can um, go directly to slope intercept if you prefer that method so I'm going to do y minus y1, so I'm just using my first point, y minus 700 equals negative 120 times x minus x1. So distribute negative 120x plus 120 is what my y minus 700 equals. So now subtract, oops, not subtract, silly me, add the 700 so that we can get the y alone. So that gives me y equals negative 120x plus 820. All right, use the equation from above to predict the cost of engine repairs if the car had four oil changes. So that means I'm taking my equation and I'm plugging in four for x. So y equals negative 120 times 4 plus 820. So when you plug that in, that is going to give you 340. So that means we would expect about $340 to be spent on repairs for a car that had four oil changes. Use the equation from section D, so our regression equation, to determine the number of oil changes someone had who paid $550 in repairs. So again, paid $550. That means that's a Y value. So put 550 in for the Y, and now we're going to be solving for X. So negative 120X plus 820. So now if we're solving for x, I'm going to subtract the 820 first. So that gives me negative 270 equals negative 120x. Divide by the negative 120. And x equals 2.25. Now here I would accept, because um, some people, um, depending on the situation, you're not buying anything, um, so you don't have to do this, but some people just bump it up if it's above 2 to 3. Um, some people round. Um, I'm just going to round it and say, since that's less than half, that I'm going to go ahead and say 2 oil changes is what I would guess somebody had. Okay, so we've got this data that we calculated ourselves. Now I want to show you how to find the line of best fit with your TI-83 or TI-84. 
So um, get out your calculator if you don't already have it out. And so you may want to pause for a second if you don't have it and then come back. So once you're ready, we need to set up what is called our stat plot, um, our statistics plot. So in order to do that, I've got all the buttons you're going to press up here. So you're going to press the second button first, and then you're going to press your Y equals button. And when you do that, that should bring up um, just not this screen that you see yet, um, but it just brings up a list of all your plots. Um, first of all, if any of them are on, you want to turn them off. Um, but uh, I don't have any of mine on. So if none of them are on, then just go ahead and press enter on plot one. And then you should see a screen that looks like this. So first thing we want to do is we want to turn it on. So you press enter when you're on top of the on key. Then we want to make sure our type is the first one here. So make sure that that is the picture that is darkened under type. Again, if it's not, you just move your cursor on top of this and press enter. For your X list, you want it to say list one. If it doesn't, you'll notice that um, in whatever color your second button is, so that might be blue or it might be yellow, above the 1 key you see L1 in that color and above the 2 key you see L2. So if it doesn't say list 1 there, you can press second 1 and it, that's how you change it. So to get the Y list to say L2 if it doesn't, you would press second 2. And then for the mark, you want this first one, so make sure it is darkened. So make sure your screen looks exactly like what I have here before you move on. Once we have our stat plot set up so that it's going to plot it how we want, now we have to enter our data into our lists. So first thing we want to do is clear out any data that might already be in the lists. So in order to do that, notice again I've got the instructions here, press stat and then press choice 4 which is clear list and then you need to tell it which lists. So this is what I'm trying to do. I'm getting it to say clear list. Um, so um, to get L1 you press second one and then if you want to clear list two also you have to um, press the comma button which the comma button is above the seven key if you didn't couldn't find it then press L2 so second two and then you can go ahead and press enter and when you do that you should get this done message telling you that the list is clear you always want to clear them out this way instead of just trying to write over top of them um, because sometimes when you write over top you miss a value so always clear them out when you're done with the data alright so now we're ready to input the data from the tables on the front so in order to input data you're gonna press stat and then you're gonna choose edit because we're editing our lists and you should see blank lists when you open it and you're just gonna type in all the data that you see now notice you can't see all of the data in one screen so if you look back at the beginning where you have your data on my X's I'm going to enter three five two three one four so on and so forth you can't see all of them on this screen you can only see the beginning ones but you need to enter all of the data that is in that table so um, if you press the first piece of data for the X which is three and press enter it'll automatically start moving down so you don't have to scroll you can just press enter after each of your number. So you're going to do 3 enter, 5 enter, 2 enter, so on and so forth. So take a minute to enter that X data. Um, sometimes, especially um, for those of you whose eyes um, get visually confused, it might be a good idea to cross off the data as you use it so that you know where you are in the list when you're looking back and forth. Another thing that you can do is count how many data pieces there are 
and make sure that that's how many data pieces you have in the list. So here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 pieces of data. So that 7, which is the last x value, should be the 13th entry. So the blank one should be the 14th entry. So once you've entered the x data, then we need to enter the y value that goes with it. The, of course, the order is important. So if you went straight this way on the x's, you do the same on the y's. So you can just press over to get to the top of L2. So your right arrow will take you to the top of L2. And then you just start entering this data. So hit 300, enter, 300, enter, and keep going. Again, might be helpful to cross off as you go to make sure you don't double enter a value or something like that. Because usually when people get the wrong answer, it's because they entered the data incorrectly. So when you finish, hopefully um, it lines up so that the 7 is with the 150. Again, if not, go back and fix your data. You've got to get all the data in the tables. All right, so now we are going to have the calculator calculate the line of best fit for this data. So here are the buttons that you're going to press. You're going to press Stat, and then you're going to press Calc. So that's a scroll right is where the calc is. So you press the right arrow after you press stat. Then we are going to choose choice four, which is linear regression. Now, um, when you go and you press choice four, linear regression, the default linear regression is to use list one and list two. If you have an 83, all you will see is something that looks like this on your screen, L-I-N-R-E-G, and then it'll have a parenthesis A-X plus B. If you have a newer calculator, um, when you do that, you should um, get a different screen where it just kind of tells you what your um, list is so it says X list Y list and so you can double check and confirm that you have the correct lists but on an 83 the default is list 1 and list 2 so if you're using list 1 and list 2 you can just press enter if you want it to use different lists you have to say you know L3 comma L4 um, so on and so forth um, so if you have the 84, it's automatically going to be telling you what lists you're using. Um, and if you have the 84, instead of just pressing enter, you have to scroll down to press calculate um, um, over the enter sign. So for 83, you just press enter, and you should see a screen that looks something like this. So, it's no good to know how to use the calculator if you, doesn't, if you don't know what it means. So, um, according to the calculations, the equation for the line of best fit here is y equals negative 82 point, let's round it to 05x plus 700. So when we look at this, it says, how does this compare to the equation that you calculated? Well, um, they're definitely different um, because a slope of negative 120 and a slope of negative 82 um, is, is very different. Um, the slope of our line is much steeper. And our y-intercept was higher. So why do you think they are the same or they are different? Obviously they are different. If you look here, 
when I drew the line, I said something specific about this point because it, this point, doesn't seem to be in the rest of the trend line. It seems to be kind of way out on its own. So I kind of disregarded that point when I drew my line. The calculator doesn't disregard any points. We call those points outliers, and the calculator doesn't discount them. So um, the outlier is the reason for that big difference, because we discounted it, and the calculator includes it because it's very unusual, obviously, to spend no money on car repairs in a specific year. So let's look at what the calculator's equation does. It says we're going to use it to predict the cost of engine repairs if the car had four oil changes. So same thing that we did on the front, only using the new equation, so negative 82.05 times 4 plus 700. So when we punch that, into our calculator here. We've got negative 82.05 times 4 and then we're going to add the 700. That gives us about $371.80. So we're predicting that cost and if we compare it to the cost we would predicted by hand was about 340. So even though the equations are much different, the prediction isn't that much different, at least at that value. Then we want to do the same thing, predict the number of oil changes for someone who paid 550. So 550 is the y, negative 82.05x plus 700. So subtract the 700 first. So then we've got a negative 150 equals negative 82.05x. So now we're going to divide. And we find x equals 1.83 approximately. So again, it's above the 0.5, so I'm going to round it up. We're going to say two oil changes. So notice, even though our equations were pretty different, we still got the same answer and a very close answer here. So we want to think about what the advantages are of both of these. What would be an advantage to using the calculator to derive the equation? Um, well, obviously, it's a little less work. Um, because you're punching the data in instead of plotting it all by hand. Um, the other advantage is that you don't have to necessarily make any decisions. So when you're deciding where to draw that line of best fit, and like I decided to not include that outlier, the calculator makes all those decisions for you. You don't have to think about whether to include something or whether you have enough points above and below. Um, the advantage of doing it by hand, I think you can see with the difference here, is that we can exclude outliers. And we can also make sure line fits the trend. All right. Um, so hopefully you feel pretty comfortable with what buttons you need to press here, and that is it for today.